is really our hope for the future. If we want to continue a lifestyle that's energy intensive in an industrialized nation, we want to have our air conditioners and our TVs and our computers and our lights at night, then we require energy. In America today, just in the homes of America, the residences, not the buildings and the factories, we have three times more roof area than is necessary to power this entire nation. This is Agate Flat, Oregon. We're six miles off grid here, which means the nearest electric light socket uh, from the utility is about six miles from here. And we're making all of our own electricity and our, our own heat here using solar energy and a little bit of wind energy, too. This is a solar electric and wind electric powered office. It's full of uh, Macintosh computers. There are three workstations here that we use to produce Home Power magazine. This is where most of the energy gets consumed. Part of what we're doing at Home Power is trying to make folks aware that the technologies for becoming energy self-sufficient and technologies for having what we want out of life without destroying this planet exist. It's just a matter of going, I'll use it, I'll do it. That's all it takes, stand up and do it. Traditionally, the utility grid has generated electricity by burning things. They started out burning wood and coal, and we know the effects of burning coal, sulfur dioxide, acid and rain. These are also non-renewable sources of energy. There's only so much coal, there's only so much oil, there's only so much natural gas. Um, these are finite sources of energy that are consumed in megalithic power plants watched over by grinning acolytes and shipped out on lines to us. Renewable energy is a major paradigm shift. All of a sudden, energy is not something that is made in a huge power plant, a scarce commodity that you rent from others. Energy is something you can grow in your front lawn, uh, lawn like you would grow turnips or carrots or potatoes. All you need is some sunshine or some wind. Power quality is becoming a big issue in America because the grid is stretched so thin. The utilities are asking you, uh, please shut down your air conditioner because we're having trouble keeping the voltage up and keeping the power quality high. The utilities are into status quo. They would like to continue to see us dam rivers, run nukes, burn coal. They're dragging their feet. And this is the entire point of Solar Gorilla. A Solar Gorilla is a person that uh, has decided to use renewable energy and place their excess generation capacity onto the grid. The reason I'm doing it in a low profile kind of incognito way is because it, it seems that the utility companies have uh, a difficulty with people putting their power, clean renewable energy power on the, on the grid and they have obstructionist tendencies that make it really difficult to do it legally even though it's legally mandated that they buy the power from it. Some of the utilities, for example, uh, Pacific Gas and Electric has gone so far as mandating very large uh, liability insurance policies, very expensive two metering systems. And the reason that they say they're doing this is because they're afraid of the electricity backfeeding the grid when the grid is down and there's a worker on the lines thinking the lines are, are de-energized and having a system like this feeding into the grid and electrocuting a line worker. And the truth of the matter is that the technology and safeguards in the inverters these days make that basically an impossibility. I put up a small PV system on my rooftop 
and I'm feeding the energy back into the utility grid without telling the utility. An everyday person can impact the utility company by putting solar panels on their roof, by putting up a wind generator in their backyard. And if they need to, go gorilla. What we have here is uh, what we like to consider the solar gorilla's uh, secret weapon. Um, and it's basically a couple solar panels um, off the shelf, warranted for 25 years. Uh, I don't really know anything else that's warranted for 25 years. You don't need batteries, uh, you don't need anything. So what we're looking at is we have the concept down to more of an, on an appliance level. It's something that someone could buy. Um, you can get set up with a unit like this for maybe seven or eight hundred dollars um, street price and uh, generate about 100 watts of electricity. And what we did is uh, we got it hooked up to this meter here and uh, we're going to just backfeed um, home power's grid. Um, if this was your local utility, you could do this as well. So we'll just plug it in, plug and play, and uh, we can take a look back at, at uh, the meter here and, uh, and see what we're putting back onto the grid. It's just a way that you can make a statement, kind of put your money where your mouth is. You know, invest in being the grid. I imagine in the United States there's hundreds, maybe thousands, and it's growing. We're trying to help it grow by publicizing it. Um, I coined the phrase Gorilla Solar about three years ago, and then we started doing reports in Home Power, little one-page uh, reports about this Gorilla system or that. And people had bags over their heads, and, uh, and we didn't say where they were or what utility they were with. This is an environmental statement by the gorillas, and also the gorillas have all the advantages that we have here off-grid. Reliable, uninterruptible power of extremely high quality, and we know where it comes from and the environmental effects that we're making it. I think the reason we have a solar gorilla movement is because we don't have good net metering laws uh, that allow people to do it legally. I guess. Uh, the solar gorilla movement is kind of a necessary evil uh, in some places. It's not a necessary evil here because we have a net metering policy that Richard help us, helped us write uh, that says uh, not only will we net meter your system, but we'll pay you at our full retail cost for that electricity. Hopefully, as successful net metering policies and solar policies will convince other utilities that this is here to stay. You better become part of the solution and not be an obstacle. Passions run really deep with people that do this kind of work and have these kind of systems. And you know, a lot of people have lived with it. They've put it in themselves and they say, this is really good. This is good for me. This is good for the planet. This is appropriate use of technology and they get educated to the point where they can put in systems for other people. So, you know, it's, it's kind of become that kind of a system. In my opinion, use of solar energy is good manners. It's just using the energy that nature provides us freely every single day in the form that she provides it. It's, you know, thanks, Mama.